we had a look at what was heteroscedasticity or what is the meaning of heteroscedasticity and also the different sources that can lead to heteroscedasticity in the sample that we have at hand now what are the problems or what is the result or effect of heteroscedasticity on our ols estimators as you can see this is uh, yi equals to beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus ui this is our um, regular two variable regression model and what you see here is the formula for the beta 2 S beta 2 hat that is our ols estimator of the slope slope now under regular circumstances that is if our assumption of no homo heteroscedasticity holds this is the variance of beta 2 hat sigma square divided by summation xi square but now that this assumption is violated and the variance of the disturbance term is not constant and it changes as the xi value changes the variance formula is something like this so what this means is that the ols estimator is still linear and it is unbiased remember unbiased means that if in repeated sampling you calculate beta 2 hat then the mean value or the expected value of the beta 2 hat will be equal to the true population beta 2 but because of heteroscedasticity our ols estimators are no longer the best or the most efficient efficiency means that um, it is not not efficient would mean that in the entire class of linear and unbiased estimators this ols estimator does not have the least variance and obviously that would affect the quality of the predictions that we make based on this estimated model so what can be done if you have heteroscedasticity in your sample what you can do is run a generalized least squares regression the generalized least squares regression is used if the variance of the disturbance term is not constant so what that means is some xi the disturbance terms corresponding to some xi values are greater whereas the disturbance term associated with certain other x values are much lesser so ideally intuitively you would like to give greater weight to those x values of x where the variability of the disturbance term is smaller and give lesser weight to those x values whose corresponding variability of the disturbance term is much greater what is the intuitive logic behind this the intuitive logic behind this is wherever this is there is less variance of the disturbance term the observed yi values will be clustered around the estimated yi right and it is these values of x which will be more helpful in estimating the true population regression function right so we have we want to give greater weight and greater importance to those x values which are associated with a smaller variation in disturbance terms so running an ols regression an ols method on the original regression model when there is heteroscedasticity will not give us those estimators with the minimum variance what can be done is we can use the generalized least squares method in the generalized least squares method it is also called the gls method we can use the information regarding heteroscedasticity to transform our regression model so that different weights can be attached to different x values 
and using this method we get estimators we call them the gls estimators and it is gls estimators which have the minimum variance rather than the regular ols estimators so how is uh, the gls method uh, carried out we can understand it better using our original two variable model this is the simplest case if you understand it in the two variable case um, a simple extension of the same can explain how the gls method works for a multi variable or a k variable case so i have written the original two variable regression model as yi is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus ui now for ease of manipulation and for uh, uh, our convenience i am introducing a term x not i with to go with the intercept term but i am assuming that this x not i is equal to 1 for all values of i so in effect beta 1 is still the intercept uh, but writing it in this form uh, makes it easier for me to do any derivations based on it okay so what i'm doing is i am assuming if you assume that your sigma i square is known that is the variance of the error term for each xi value if it is known you can actually transform the original regression function in this way that is on both sides of the equation i have divided it by sigma i so y i star is actually equal to the original y i divided by sigma i similarly x not i star is actually the x not i divided by sigma i x i star is your x i divided by sigma i as you can see over here similarly u i star is the original u i divided by sigma i so beta 1 star and beta 2 star are the parameters of this transformed model so the starred versions actually say that they are the gls estimators rather than the ols estimators beta 1 and beta 2 now the as a result of this transformation of dividing both sides of the equation by sigma i what i have done is if you look at the error term ui star and you look at have a look at its variance you will see that the variance of ui star actually comes out to be 1 and constant right so by doing the simple transformation of dividing both sides of the model or the equation by sigma i i have transformed the original model into another one where the variance of the error term is constant so once again all the assumptions of the clrm or the classical linear regression model are satisfied to this transformed model if i apply the same ols method of estimation i will get estimators beta 2 star hat and beta 3 star hat and these estimators that is the gls estimators will also have the minimum variance so what is gls gls is simply ols method being applied on transformed variables which satisfy your standard least squares assumptions in particular this gls uh, or this transformed model has an error term with constant variance okay and the estimators obtained by this method are blue that is in the entire class of the linear unbiased estimators these gls estimators have minimum variance so what is the exact difference between ols and gls in ols we are minimizing the sum of the squared residuals that is summation ui hat square and in gls in effect we are minimizing a weighted sum of the squared residuals that is a weight wi is being attached to ui hat square and what is this weight this weight is 1 divided by 
sigma i square. So this method is also called the weighted least squares method and these estimators can also be called WLS or weighted least squares estimators. Now weighted least squares or WLS is a special case of GLS. As you will notice even in the case of autocorrelation you can have a GLS method that can be uh, a GLS um, uh, a procedure that can be applied. So in the context of heteroscedasticity, WLS and GLS are, can be the two terms that is weighted least squares and generalized least squares can be used interchangeably. What will happen if we continue to use OLS even though there is heteroscedasticity in the sample? We know that both OLS as well as GLS estimators are unbiased. But the GLS estimator is the one which has minimum variance. The OLS estimator beta 2 hat on the other hand has variance greater than beta 2 star hat right or the GLS estimator GLS estimator. So if we use OLS estimator whether allowing for heteroscedasticity or simply ignoring it we know that the conclusions and the inferences that can be drawn from it such as the confidence intervals that you can build for the true population parameter or any other hypothesis testing that we carry out. If we you continue to use OLS estimators, we, the, these conclusions and inferences will be quite misleading. Whether we allow or correct for heteroscedasticity or not, the OLS estimator will consistently overestimate the true standard error which can be obtained by using the GLS procedure or the generalized least squares procedure. Now, let's have a look at the different methods of detection. There are informal and formal methods. So, the informal methods, the very first one is you can have an idea about heteroscedasticity, whether it is present or not, from the very nature of the problem that you are studying. Uh, a priori and theoretically, ob uh, theoretical and previous empirical observations can give us a clue that there might be some heteroscedasticity present. Um, our uh, regular examples of regressing uh, income or the effect of studying the effect of income on consumption expenditure behavior. We know that at higher incomes, the consumption expenditure behavior will show much greater variability because people have much more options and they will exercise these options in different manner. The variability will increase. So the nature of the problem itself can give us a clue that there might be heteroscedasticity present. Then you can always do a post-mortem analysis using the graphical method. That is, um, carry out the OLS procedure on the model, uh, on the uh, original model, calculate the UI hats, okay. UI hat will be your observed YI minus your estimated YI hat. So once you have this UI hat, plot UI hat square along or against the y variable okay now remember ui hat squared is not the same as your ui squared the ui hat squared is the estimate estimated error term and although it is not same as the population error term we assume that it is a close enough approximation Okay, and if you if you have got a large sample size, then it is uh, even more um, assured that UI hat is almost the same as your population UI. So, anyways, you first run the OLS regression, calculate UI hat, and plot UI hat squared against YI hat. If you see some sort of a systematic pattern between the two variables then it is a clue that or an indicator that there is heteroscedasticity present okay another method of doing the same thing is you can plot this ui ui hat squared against 
one or more of the explanatory variables often what happens is a priori or prior a priori means prior to running the test itself you have an idea as to which x variable might be causing the heteroscedasticity problem so in consumption expenditure model you have consumption expenditure as your y variable and you can think of many x variables uh, income is one of the important x variables explanatory variables may be the age group to which the person belongs um, the wealth that a person is associated with so you can think of a multivariable model for consumption expenditure but you might a priori you do have an idea that it is income the x variable income that is causing the heteroscedasticity so in that case you can plot ui hat square against the income variable and see if there is a systematic pattern that can be seen the advantage of plotting ui hat against the x variable is that um x variable and observing is that we might get some information that is helpful to us to transform the data so that we have homoscedastic residuals